We are here today for our student panel. And we've had lots of conversations these past several weeks um, on various subjects uh, pertaining to transportation. And we did hybrid learning. And we talked about nutrition programs. Oh, yeah, be quiet. Talked about a bunch of other um, things that, uh, that pertain to going back to school. So today, we want to talk to the most important piece of this whole picture is the students. And you guys are representing some of those voices. So we just wanted to um, introduce each one that's on the call today. We have Isabel here. On, I don't know if you see it the same way that I do, but Isabel's for me is on the upper left corner. And she goes to Monticello High School. She's a rising junior, and that's in Albemarle County Schools. Wave, I guess if you get that. And mm -hmm. then we have Benjamin, and Benjamin is on the right up here. And he is um, a student that goes to Jefferson Forest High School and he's a rising senior, and he goes to Bedford County Schools. And then we have Charlotte. Charlotte goes to, oh my gosh, tell me how to say your name. <laughs> Matoka. Matoka. <laughs> anyway, I just wanted to do that for fun. Anyway, um, they go to Mato she goes to Matoka Middle School, and she's a rising eighth grader, and that's in Chesterfield County. And then Anna, Anna is a student at Stanton, Stanton River High School, and she's also a rising senior, and that is also in Bedford County. And Asia, on the right, is goes to the same middle school. What's the name? Metallica. I know. I'm just having fun with it. Sorry. And um, she's also a rising eighth grader, and again, Chesterfield County Schools. So. Anyway, um, I just, we're gonna have just some casual conversation just to ask you guys what you're thinking, what's happening. Um, I guess we'll just go around the room in general and ask you how was learning from home? Because basically you had to learn from home for this, for the whole basically last semester um, feeding into this. So I'll start with Isabel. How was it for you? Was it good? Yeah, it, I think it went very smoothly. Um, it, of course, was not the ideal way to finish out the year. Um, however, under these circumstances, it was you know, the best that we could do. And I give all the props to my teachers. They provided us with a lot of resources to help the transition and then just the, the rounding out of the year go as smoothly as possible. Um, and I think it definitely went uh, very well, given the fact that they were only given a few weeks to kind of switch all of their material online. So. Yeah, that's definitely a challenge for sure. Benjamin, how about you? I would say I'm right there with Isabel in saying that the teachers did a great job of providing us with the resources. And because of the lack of somebody over your shoulder kind of making sure that you're doing the work, it puts a new sense of self-responsibility on learning and getting things done. And I think that that's something that maybe is a new different aspect for high school, but really is a good instrument for us to use that, although it wasn't intended, proved to help us to learn a little bit more about ourselves and what we can do without that external force that school provides sometimes. So I thought that that was really cool. I thought yeah, it went well. That is a good, that's a good point and very helpful to move into the college arena as well, because you will have to be self-motivated and productive in that manner. How about you, Charlotte? Uh, for mine, it was, the teachers did a really good job, but I think the students didn't really do a great job in keeping up with, like, going to online classes or doing their work, mm -hmm. because for some of my classes, there would only be, like, three or four students. Oh, really? So, and there was supposed to be a full 24 or whatever your class load would be? The only class that, like, almost everyone was in was probably math, so... Everything else, everyone decided, yeah, it's not important. Interesting. So there, are there any um, ramifications from that as it relates to grades or? No. Not really? It was a, if you do it, you get a good grade. No. no. Just you just get a, a mark to say that you were in, included. Mm hmm So it was a choice. Yeah. How about you, Asia? So you go to the same school. I'd say the same thing because not all the kids joined and stuff. Like when we did the calls, there was only like five kids that got up there and actually participated. Hmm. Okay. So there were, um, it's interesting. 
I guess just understanding the metrics of that and, and how they manage the class when not everyone shows up. And then how do you have to turn in um, materials and things like that at a, at a certain point in the process? Uh, yes, there's a due date that you have to turn it in. So just whether you decided to watch or be involved in the class and the actual lecture. Um, yes. But if you did the work, it, they, they didn't mind that you didn't watch the lecture or be a part of the class itself because you did the work. Is that the gist of it? Yeah. Okay. Hmm. Anna, how about yourself? Um, yeah, pretty much the same as everybody else. There was like, um, uh, like the teachers did a good job getting everything together. But um, as the school year like finished, like at the very beginning, I, most people were pretty on top of like showing up to the classes and stuff. And as it like finished, there was less and less people because it wasn't for a grade. It was just like, if you did it, you got some extra credit. Uh, a lot of people at our school don't have internet, so they couldn't make it a grade. Oh, that makes sense. So it's hard for people yeah. to even get. Yeah, that does definitely make sense. Hmm. Do you think that you were a, um, a good online learner or a remote learner? Do you feel like you wish i mean is that a piece of this that's like this was great for me because i like learn i like doing this on my own or do you wish that you had a little bit more connectivity um do you thrive you know would you thrive in a, in a different environment what's better for you isabel i'll start with you sure so um you know i won't lie to say that it was difficult learning online um and i agree with what benjamin said about the like self-accountability aspect of it um, that was very apparent. Um, and I would say that I thrive in a, um, you know, in person, typical learning environment. Um, and I, th I thought it was difficult. Um, but I understand that there's a good possibility that that's kind of the direction that we're heading, um, for this upcoming school year, at least like partially. So, um, we'll have to see kind of how it changes from the end of the school year to now like the beginning of the school year to see what changes they make and um because like i mentioned they had no time to prepare um for mm -hmm. the end of the school year so i'm just curious to see how it changes um in the upcoming year right i think to piggyback off of that isabel that's an interesting point that like this is our reality like it's what's going on so i don't really think it has to be all about like i'm a good in-person learner i'm a good online learner but it's more about we are online learning. That's part of what we're doing. So maybe we need to start changing our mindsets and how we look at the difference between in-person learning and online learning. If that's possible to say, okay, how can I flip the switch or start to move myself to be a better online learner? Because that's what we're doing and I don't get a choice. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's kind of like a mental, mental switch, yeah. Yeah, understandable. Charlotte, how about yourself? I think I'm more of an in-class learner because in in your home, you don't really want to do school stuff. So, like, if you, if you try to do one thing, you could get distracted by something that's in your home. Mm -hmm. And in school, like, a teacher could get you back. Like you. You mm -hmm. Or, like, another student. Mm hmm how about you, Asia? Um, I'd say uh, out of school learner because um, I think I would get more distracted in school because people are like, talking and stuff. Okay. And yeah, and I'd be like better when I'm at home learning by myself mm -hmm. with nobody around me. That's good. So it worked out great for your the type of learning, but everyone is a different learner for sure. And Anna, how about yourself? I definitely like being like in class and seeing my teachers and being able to ask them questions when I immediately think of them. Mm -hmm. But I'm also like a super organized person. So this, this happened. I got like this huge planner out and like set dates for myself. Mm -hmm. Like in classes that didn't even have them so that I could keep myself on a schedule. So like I'm learning how to do things like that on my own. Other than that's that. great. So that was helpful. <clears throat> yeah, that's excellent. I think it kind of goes on what Isabel and Benjamin were saying too before, as far as like you, 
you're kind of thrust into this situation. So you're kind of making the best of it, doing what you can with it. I just know like when Charlotte was speaking and Asia were speaking too, it's everybody is a different learner and what your needs are, are quite, quite unique. Every, that's why even in classrooms, you know, as a teacher is trying to work with you, each student has different needs and different um, types of learning styles. And so they kind of have to cater to that as well and to kind of work with you. So I think this hybrid concept sounds pretty interesting because it'll give you a chance to do both. And, uh, and definitely for those of you that are in high school and getting ready to move on to college, I can imagine that's going to be only beneficial to you in that way to learn. Because I know my, my student, which my daughter, is a senior, a rising senior in, at a university. And so um, having these skills, I mean, she's pretty good, actually. But having these skills are going to be really helpful, really, really helpful. So, um, all right. So I'll move on to a couple other questions we had. So do you know how school is going back for you next semester? Um, do you know what that looks like? Have they told you for sure? Or do you know, do you have an idea of it? And what would you like to see? Like, if you, if you got to choose, if you got to say, I think we should do X, um, what would you, what would you put out there? I'm going to start with Isabel again. Sorry. Maybe go the other way. Okay. <laughs> um. So we do not have a set plan yet. However, there are about three options that it sounds like Almoral County is um, kind of deciding between. So, um, and they are hybrid options. So um, we'd be in school a couple days a month. Um, I think one of the options has us in school maybe two days a week. Um, and then we would have virtual learning um, the other days. So we don't have a plan yet, um, and they are taking input from students. So they're sending out surveys to students and parents so that we can um, vote on certain things or give them suggestions. Um, I personally would like a hybrid option um, because I, I think I need that face-to-face -face contact with my teacher. Um, I think in a Zoom call, um, some I think just certain aspects get lost in translation because I think a big part are those nonverbal um, like communication that kind of helps teachers understand if the students are understanding the content um, and then kind of vice versa. So uh, we don't have a set plan yet, but that's kind of what I'm hoping for. Okay, very good. Benjamin? Yeah, to speak for Bedford County, they have come out with a plan separate for K through six and then seven through 12. So our K through six, I can speak on that for a second. We have plans to send kids to school five days a week, every week with typically K through three or K through four going to elementary schools and four through six or five through six in some cases going up to middle schools so that they can socially, they can practice social distancing as well as getting to school every day which moves all of the seventh through 12th graders to have to fit into the high school, as well as social distancing, likely going once every, excuse me, two days a week is the plan that they've come out with for that, while also an entirely virtual option being offered to everyone if they're not comfortable with coming into school. And I think that I trust that they are doing the absolute best they can to put together a plan that works well for everybody as well as I forgot to mention, they are moving us to, from a six period day, at least at my high school, we're moving to three semesters, excuse me, three classes per semester, mm -hmm. which is the same, I guess, if you're talking about overall throughout the year, but it's definitely going to be a weird change for us and for me. But I think it's interesting and I trust that they're doing the best that they can to put together a plan that will work and be the best that it can be. Yeah, and what do you, what do you, what would you personally, you as your person, what would you like? I would like to be there, and I think that Isabel speaking on like, there's nothing like being in front of a teacher and having them like walk you through a problem or something on the board. Which obviously Zoom has features like that and can bring in those aspects, but it's not the same. So while I do think that online learning is something to get accustomed to and something that we can all better from there's nothing like being there in person. So I would love to maximize the time that I could be in the classroom. Gotcha. Gotcha. And I didn't mention, but Admiral County is also, uh, has a 100% virtual option. 
Um, I forgot to mention that. So you can vote between hybrid and then all online. Gotcha. And Charlotte? Charlotte and Asia, you kind of the, the same school. So you guys could both speak to what you know, if you know of what the plan of action is. Do you know of anything? Uh, basically the same as Isabel and Benjamin is what I'm hearing. Yeah. Asia, have you heard anything different? No. Same. Not really. So what, what, uh, Asia, I think I know what your answer is related to what you personally would like to do. But you tell me. <laughs> I don't want to guess. What would you I like? Would, would, I would like to go to school for a couple of days every week if okay. they had the option to. Good. Okay. So a hybrid thing for you as well. Even though I know you, you said earlier that you really did well and thrived in the um, remote application. So that's good. And Charlotte, I think what you said before is you'd like to go all the time if you could. <laughs> but, I think I think I would do kind of a hybrid, like so they would do something on the, on a vir like on a virtual atmosphere, and then if I had any questions, I could ask them when I go to school. Yeah. So it's not like a kind of a win-win kind of thing. If you have questions, you can ask when you go back. It's a good idea. I like that. And Anna, I think Benjamin told us what was happening in Bedford County, which you go to as well. But what is your personal, what would your personal choice be? Um, I just, I don't know, I'd like, I want to be in school like as much as possible because I like the like face-to-face -face contact with like teachers or whatever. And I like being around like my, the people that I go to school with. Peers, yeah. Mm -hmm. That makes sense. Um. So speaking on that, on the peers thing, have you, oh, I'm sorry, Benjamin. Well, I was just going to say, I noticed a question that was sent in from somebody and mm -hmm. I would be willing to speak to that. If you, is that all right? Yeah. Go. Yeah. Okay. So they asked about masks and how they're working with that. In Bedford County, from what I've heard, they are saying that masks are required for staff when social distancing cannot be practiced. And I'm not sure about in other circumstances, and highly recommended for students in those circumstances as well. And on, in my opinion, and I can, it's easy for me to say this now and then not follow through on it later, but I think I plan on wearing a mask every day in every circumstance out of respect for other people and respect of the situation, because I think that it's important and it's not really that big of a like weight on me so I plan on wearing a mask and I think that it's important for other people to do the same and I like that and I wish that it could be required for everyone. Okay, you have something, Anna? I say, oh, sorry. <laughs> sorry, go ahead, Anna. Oh, I can't hear you. Okay, um, so with the mask thing, the, teach yeah, the teachers are supposed to wear them if you can't social distance, but students are not required to wear them in any level, no matter what. They can if they choose to, but they are not required and it cannot be enforced. And so I just, my mom's a teacher, so I know like more of the little details of things like that. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. And Isabel? Um, Alvaro County is required to wear masks, teachers, staff, and students, um, which I think is, you know, a good thing because the virus isn't going to go away. Um, and I think taking those precautions and following guidelines is important um, if we're gonna try to uh, go back to school and have it last as long as possible because there's a potential for a spike in, in the virus. So we just have to be as careful as possible. Charlotte and Asia, do you have any comments? Oh, I'm sorry, Benjamin. No, you're fine. Yeah, Charlotte and Asia, go ahead and share. Do how do you feel about wearing the masks in, in school? I would want to wear a mask yeah. just to be safe. Makes you feel safer? Yes. Yeah. I think a mask would kind of make you feel more secure and mm -hmm. feel like you're safe. Makes sense. Do you have any family members that, I mean, because I know it's one thing to be young and feel like you're healthy, but you know that you could potentially bring it back home, I guess. And that's, I guess, one of the bigger concerns. So are you speaking, Isabel? No. 
Okay. <laughs> That's a question that says, how do your parents feel about students returning to school in a physical manner? So I was asking them so I could Oh, since they're right there. Yeah, I was like, I see you speaking. <laughs> <laughs> Would you like to speak? Oh, but there are no words. <laughs> there are no words, yeah. Um, that's a good question. Um, my dad says that he is concerned about going to school like <laughs> for everyone. Yeah. Yeah, for everyone involved. I think I can say the same for my parents as well. They're worried about what the world's got out there. It's kind of scary to think about mm -hmm. right now, too. For sure. Um, you guys, there's a couple teachers here. I mean, parents with teachers, like Charlotte, I think you said, and Anna. Asia, I don't know with, with your mom was a teacher as well. But I think a couple of you have parents that are teachers. How, do, how are they feeling as teachers, too? Not just parents, but teachers. Um, my mom is, like, excited to see kind of, like, how things are changing and see, like, how it's going to go. Um, and she's looking like more of a positive way than like negatively on the situation. Okay. And Charlotte? Uh, <laughs> and your mom's right there. <laughs> um, she said whatever it is. It is. <laughs> <laughs> whatever it is, it is. Okay. Very good. Um, so does do any of you i know this is one thing for sporting events or club group activities things like that are you still finding that that's going to be an option for you um have you been having discussions with coaches and and, and or um leaders of those groups Re recently i've started doing softball again and mm -hmm. that's something that's coming back up and then my mom told me that run like cross country that I do is gonna might, might be in February. Okay. okay. Isabel? Um, so this is my club team, not my high school team, but um, so I swim and we've been back practicing as a team for about six weeks. Um, so I sw we're a local Y, we swim at our local Y. So we have to work with the Y for our practice times. Um, and there are restrictions in place um, and a limited amount of people are allowed in each lane. We have to wear masks in the building and on deck. Um, and, you know, we social distance when we're on deck. So, um, but we are, we're, we're up and running. We have practice six days a week. So, um, yeah, and I haven't heard anything about um, swimming for my school, but I know that some fall sports are back to conditioning. Um, they are wearing masks and staying, I think it's five yards apart, so more than six feet. Um, but yeah, so that's kind of what's going on in Charlottesville. So that in general, like just, uh, it obviously, I was looking at one of the other questions that somebody posted. How has this physical distancing disrupted the normal social lives and activities of each of you? What types of things are you doing now to replace the in-person experiences attributed to the overall academic experiences? So what are you doing to replace these in-person options to try to connect and be connected to your peers and your friends and groups? Anyone? I think it's, uh, to speak from my perspective, I think it's kind of disappointing to not be able to like spend time and hang out with groups of people because that's been, I don't know, something that I guess we've taken for granted with like the ability to stand in a large group without a mask and talk and like just be close to people, not even with our friends, but even if you're going to like a concert or something like that. So I think that it's been hard to adjust to not being able to do that, but there are other alternatives. Like I've done social distance like lunches where like we'll bring food and like eat across like in our cars and stuff like that. So I think that there are alternatives and it's as limited as your imagination is to spending time with other people. Sure, that's good. Um, one of the questions earlier too is, are your schools requiring, no, we already did that. Um, a hybrid, on the hybrid options, do you know if there'll be virtual learning days or live independent learning? <clears throat> I guess what they're trying to say is like, will, when you have your day off basically and you're not in school, 
will those that are in class, you know, will you be doing that virtually with the other group or, you know, do you, any idea about that? That makes sense. I don't know what, what's going to happen in regards to that, because if half of the school is going one day and half of the school is going the other day, um, the teachers, you know, wouldn't be able to host Zoom meetings for the students who are at home. But I understand maybe like we could uh, zoom in and like watch the lesson mm -hmm. happen. Um, maybe that, uh, but no, I, I don't think that has been really talked. I don't, I don't know. I don't know about that. Yeah. I don't know the answer to that either. Me neither. <laughs> I don't know for sure, but I think <laughs> that it's like um, more like kind of a like when you go that day, go and you do all your stuff or whatever. It's kind of you fit it, you either finish it or there's already stuff online that you do in addition to because there's also the people who are doing 100% virtual, and I know that I don't think they're like zooming into a class every single day so I think you would just do it virtually on the day that you're not there like I don't think you would like sit on your computer all day and watch the class I'm, I'm pretty sure I could be wrong but I, I don't think so I think I gotcha. it's more of your own kind of speed like if whenever you want to do it that day okay. the way you've been doing it basically up to this point mm -hmm. except that that's actually perfect grade gotcha um Yes, ma'am, Isabel. I was just going to answer a question that um, Mr. Thompson wrote out. Okay. Yep, I was scrolling yeah. down. Go ahead. Uh -huh. Okay, so the question is, in the event that schools do choose to return in the fall, what safety measures would you like to see in your school to minimize the risk of COVID-19? Mm -hmm. um, I think that um, guidelines that the um, CDC. CDC put out um is what we should follow i would feel most comfortable if everyone um wears masks and that's what we're required to do for Admiral county um you know phys socially physically distancing um maybe rearranging the classroom so that um you know students are able to be six feet apart or using the more common spaces like the atrium or the forum or the auditorium the gym the cafeteria the library bigger spaces um, for the classes because if half the school, half of the um, student body is going each day, I think it would be a bit easier to distance. Um, also like hand sanitizer just at every hallway. Um, you seeing like that they'll, they'll clean maybe after every class period or something like that. Um, so I think the most that they could do is the best that they, they can do. I agree with everything that Isabel is saying, I think that's like, like the hand sanitizer and the requisition of, is that a word? And then the requiring of masks is important. I think also it's going to take like commitment on the student's behalf and all the faculty to say like, if we're going to like social distance and we're going to be safe, it's got to be something that everybody's on board with, or at least you have some strong like people with authority on board with it to say like, if you see people close together and like groups gathering that you're like, hey, remember why we're doing this, like, let's be serious and stay mm -hmm. safe. So I think that that's another, although that's not really like a safety measure and something that you can like just put down and leave, it's important for everybody to mentally be on the same page of how important it is, in my opinion. Do you guys agree I, with that? I agree. Um, I know that like, I'm, I, I, I agree, but like I said, I think that they are, I know that they're gonna have like hand sanitizers outside of every door. And I agree that like they should pay attention to like people being too close, but at the same time, the students also have to like. I know personally, like me, I don't like missing school because I hate having to like make up work and stuff. So if I have like a cough or something, I'm like, oh, I'm fine, I'll be fine, and I keep going. That's something that like now we have to be more aware of like oh i have a cough and i'm not feeling 100 percent, so i should stay home today like i think it's something it's more on us to not just like the actual school itself so kind of be aware of that more responsible for yourself in that way it was another couple <clears throat> questions um or charlotte and asia did you have anything else to add N not really i agree with everything 
Okay. Um, uh, Julie Williams asks, how are application experiences being incorporated in the learning process? How do you take what you are learning and apply it to real understanding and usage of the information? Anybody want to tackle that one? Uh, if that's asking, like, how are you using the stuff that you learn? Is that asking, like, just generally, or is it talking online, like, specifically? I guess maybe or, online, because, yeah. I think that we've lost in science classes, maybe we've lost the ability to do labs hands and have hands-on. If that's kind of what she's asking, mm -hmm. I do feel like we've lost that, but like the FET simulations that are available online through like University of Colorado and stuff like that, we've done things like that. And there are different ways to simulate it. Mm -hmm. And I think that as long as we're taking advantage of those and we can put a visual component to it, at least for me, it doesn't always have to be about hands-on watching it happen. So. I don't know if that answers the question, but I think that there are ways to get around that and valuable things. Isabel, what do you think? Yeah, so um, I think that some of my, um, you mentioned like science teachers, so my chemistry and my anatomy teachers did a good job of um, making labs online that relate to kind of real world experiences. So, um, you know, they would take case studies and stuff and have us work through those to kind of oh, get yeah. the application. Um, so I think that it's partially kind of what the teachers are able to provide you. Um, and I think my teachers did a great job of, of providing those resources. Perfect. Great. Um, well, we are getting, we are actually just past our time. There's so many additional questions on here. Um, let me just read through a couple and see if we could do something quick with it before we close up. Uh, they were asking about cleaning and whether you guys feel like that should be a part of the student's job too, to help kind of clean after yourself. Maybe like when you go to the gym and you wipe down your desk as you move out of the room, that sort of thing. If that's kind of just ends up helping the process for your, for your school, I can imagine that you all would be on board, right? Yes. Um, and then, <clears throat> yeah, what do you think about these partitions? that some people are, are considering on the desks, like the actual shields and that sort of thing. You know, you've got the mask, if you already have the mask on, I guess, is the shield an additional measure? Is that something you feel is helpful, necessary? You know, when we go to the grocery store, you know, there's a shield up there because they don't, aren't required to wear the mask the whole time. I guess it's one or the other. How do you feel about that? I would feel like I'm taking a test and there's just like a shield between <laughs> me and the person. <laughs> like, <laughs> I feel like a right. mask is enough, really, because basically almost everyone wears one. It would be better, and a shield would kind of be like a little redundant for the application. Mm -hmm. So we, you know, we talked about um, all of these various things. I was telling you that we've had these town hall meetings about different topics like transportation, the bus scheduling, how to manage all that, keeping the social distance within that. We talked about nutrition plans on other calls, not with you guys, but other calls, um, hybrid learning. We talked about social emotional wellness and social, um, the school culture and what that feels like. Um, I mean, there's a lot of moving parts to this, obviously for everybody um, involved and it's, it's a big challenge. It's something unprecedented, obviously, in our history, that th that this is that we have to think like this, and that your schools have to think like this. So it's that's a lot. Um, do you have? Do you think what kinds of methods do you think should be in place to have proper student voice and to really be able to share with the administration and feel like you can understand their plight and they understand yours? Uh, what kinds of things do you think could be implemented? Do you have any ideas about things that could be implemented to? support that the best and feel like you're you're being heard and they're being heard and everyone feels safe and comfortable and that the, that it's a good collaboration of ideas. Anyone? Um, so Avril County has been sending out surveys to the parents and the students um, and I think that surveys are you know a, a good way to get input. I mean it's not like we can go in person and let them know how we feel so I think that the surveys and just um, that communication through email or maybe phone calls or uh, virtual town halls, um, just to try to keep that communication line um, constant between the 
um, like the school board and the students. Very good. Agreed. Anyone else have any thoughts on that? I'm a big survey guy. Like surveys, I think that if they want to know what students think, sending out a survey is the best way to like just figure out a majority. And if they're going to work like that, then that's great. And then also maybe having some free answer questions or some ability for students to sign up for surveys if they want their voice heard in more than just a multiple choice question. I really think that having a few students represent the majority obviously doesn't always tell the full story, but can tell a bigger story to the administration and to the people that are making decisions, as well as something that represents the greater piece of people, it's not even a phrase, I got like you. a survey. Mm -hmm. well, I think that's great. Well, we really appreciate your input. It's been great to get to talk to all of you and get some feedback so we can understand sort of your position in this whole scheme, which is the most important position in my opinion, because that's what we have school for, is for you to learn and to, um, and to grow from. So we just want to, um, I really appreciate all of your time. Thank you very much for joining us today. Anybody else have any other questions or thoughts that you just want to put out there? All Thank good? Thank you for having us. Yeah. Thank you. Thank right. you. Have a great day. Me too. See ya. Bye. Bye. Bye.